very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Environment Minister protested last week that I was being unfair when I questioned his ministry's budget priorities. But since 2007, when this administration took over, the environment budget has plummeted 30 per cent, while the communications portion of the environment budget is up 60 per cent. Now, that sure looks to me like propaganda is more important than action in this ministry. But to the minister, if it's not about propaganda, then why is the action part of the budget dropped and the communication part increased over the last four years? The Honourable Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm looking forward to three hours of uh, intense debate on my budget in this very chamber on, I think it's the 22nd of March. And these kinds of in-depth questions, I think, are much more appropriately dealt with at that time. The Honourable Member. Yeah, question periods, no time to ask something of the Minister. Well, let me try again. Here's another example. Um, the industry monitoring system, RAMP, is discredited in study after scientific study. And this Ministry only put $17 million into its monitoring system. So why does the government continue to pour money into communications rather than actually getting the work done, specifically providing the monitoring that both industry and the public requires to know that all is well. The Honourable Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, this member knows the answer to that question because she asked the same question during estimates last year, at which time I explained to her that the reason for the change in the communications budget is because we amalgamated minister, um, the Ministerial Correspondence union, unit with the Communications Unit. There was no increase in overall spending. I told her last year in estimates, and I'll tell her again today. Good job. Back to the same minister. Given that this government has relied on federal dollars to justify not taking action itself on climate change, how will this ministry make up for an estimated 95 per cent decrease in climate change funding over the next two years? The Honourable Minister. Well, one of the things I think is interesting to note that, uh, that often gets overlooked is that we are the first jurisdiction in all of Canada that has brought in legislation that has a requirement that large industrial emitters contribute to a technology fund. Mr. Speaker, that fund thus far has, uh, has allocated about $100 million. No other province has done that. Oh, and by the way, the chairman of that fund, Mr. Eric Newell, in, in making the announcement last, le last week, pointed out that there is a multiplier effect on that fund, and that $100 million has resulted in, in direct investment of in excess of $450 million in this province. It's not in my budget, but it's the honorable.